Turn your Bible, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12, verse 33 to 37. Matthew 12, verse 33 to 37. We're going to hear God's word all together. Here's the word of God. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Amen. Jesus is talking about how we speak, the words that we speak, right? Um, let's say this is, you know, us, and we speak. That's output, right? Uh, something goes in. Inputs. But if you have inputs and it's going to sit it in your heart and you're going to think about it and you're going to think about it, you ponder upon it, and then comes out of your mouth. So that's output. So uh, you need to examine what kind of inputs you have. It's not going to just come out. It's going to be seated in your heart. And you're going to spend your time to think about it. If you think it's right, then you're going to spit it out. Outputs. Um, last week, um, there was something happened in Japan, right? A former Japanese prime minister was assassinated, um, Shinjo Abe, right? By a person named uh, Tetsuya Yamagami. And... Um, he held grudge against the group that he believed Mr. Um, Abe was associated with. Uh, that's what the policeman uh, said. He held grudge against the group that Mr. Abe was associated with. And then he was kind of mad at that group. And then something came into his mind. And then he was thinking about it. It's not out of just, you know, uh, instinct or out of just, just mere emotion, just, you know, he, he, like he killed Abe. It is very hard to get a gun in Japan, as you know. That's why people say that the gun he used was homemade. He built it up. And he used it. So that's why first time was misfire. And the second one uh, got Mr. Abe. Uh, the, if you look at the gun, it's really not fancy at all. Um, I'm not sure how often he practiced to shoot. You know, think about all the sounds that he's going to make, Right? Uh, of course, he used to be an army, uh, Navy, Japan Navy, right? But still, it was a long time ago. He hasn't practiced uh, to shoot. It's really hard. If you have like a you know, really rigid gun, 
and try to shoot, it's not going <laughs> to uh, get the target if you know. You can see that Yamagami, he got a, some kind of input, and he, that input was seated in his heart for a long time. Since he decided to make a gun on his own, it takes time. He analyzed and traced Abe's schedule. He is not current prime minister. It's hard to get to know his schedule. He was former prime minister. But he analyzed uh, and researched Abe's schedule. And he planned, uh, went to assassin, uh, assassinate Abe, kill. And then his output was killing him. So you need to kind of see this um, process. You know, whatever you say, whatever you do, coming out of this process. Right? So you need to examine your input and then this process. Like you ponder upon that. You meditate upon that. You spend time to think about it. And then as an output, you spit it out. So whatever you say, whatever you do, it's not just, just reaction. Right? It's been a while in your heart. So, um, words and actions are outputs of the condition of your heart. It's rooted. And embedded. Um, for a while. Um, <clears throat> Jesus is talking about this and that because it is really important to get to know who we are um, and once again uh Jesus' concern was to train his disciples. And his concern today is you guys. He's not just talking about the Pharisees. Right? His concern was his uh, disciples. And his concern today is you. That's why Jesus was trying to expose who the Pharisees really are. And what they had done for a long time. So you need to know. Jesus exposed the Pharisees. And their teachings and their um, life. And then he said, brood of vipers. He used this uh, term, phrase, to Pharisees and religious leaders at the time very often. Um, like I told you, um, in these days, same thing. For the Jewish people, synagogue is the center of their lives. So if there's a synagogue in Rancho Cucamonga, right, then all the Jewish people will move to the city of Rancho Cucamonga. Two? participated in all the activities that are in the synagogue. The students, they go one hour earlier to the synagogue to study the Torah. And then they go to school. And every weekend, uh, you know, fathers, they take their kids to the synagogue. They discuss about Torah. So synagogue is the center of their lives. And who is the leader of the synagogue? 
rabbis, religious leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees, right, scribes. So, including disciples, they were under the influence of the Pharisees, their teachings, their doctrines, right? So, Jesus wanted to expose the Pharisees and their teaching for the sake of his disciples. There, there's a reason why Jesus called the Pharisees the brood of vipers. They are inconsistent. Um, if you look at verse 33, what Jesus was trying to tell the Pharisees was, consider the tree good, tree good and its fruit good, or else consider the tree cropped and its fruit cropped. There's a kind of background that he... Um, ended up saying this. In reality, uh, the Pharisees considered the casting out demons as good since their, their followers, their disciples were doing it. But when Jesus cast out demons, they said, it is, you know, he, he did it by the power of Satan. So, Jesus pointed out, you are not consistent. You need to consider. You need to make um, the tree good and its fruit good. If it is corrupt, then the fruits will be corrupt. But you are not saying this. You got to be consistent, but you are not. Which means... They don't even know what they're talking about. And they're confused. They're not stable. So the term make or consider refers to mental activity. You got to know, you know, what kind of mental state you guys have. You are not consistent. You are not stable. You say something and then other time you are something different. You need to know who they are. They're not the one you need to respect or follow. They are inconsistent. They are unstable. They are confused. They don't even know what they're talking about. Don't follow them. That's, that, that's their state of their heart. On top of that, the reason why he took a vipers, um, if you look at it, um, they know how to hide themselves very well. It's really dangerous, right? Poisonous. Um, they could change their color according to the surroundings. That's why he took this um, self deceptive. The Pharisees seem to know where the power of Jesus came from, since even people who saw Jesus performing miracles, including casting out demons and healing the sick, such as blind and the mute, they acknowledge Jesus as the son of David, which means Messiah. Even just mere people, like Jewish people, they notice, they acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. Then, Pharisees, religious leaders, of course, they knew where that power came from. He was able to heal the sick, the blind, 
the mute. No one can do that other than God. They knew that. They were deceiving themselves. Self-deceptive. And Jesus wanted his disciples to know. And for us, we need to know the trend of this generation. She just wanted to expose the Pharisees and their teachings, what they try to do. They're trying to go against, totally against Jesus Christ in his ministry. That's the trends of this generation. It seems like, you know, this generation um, are so tolerable to any religions, right? So it seems like they're accepting all kinds of religions, their teachings and their doctrines. It feels like, you know, this generation is open-minded. Oh, welcome. Coexist, you know. Everyone is welcome. Just come. That's the postmodernism. But if you put them together, and they are totally going against the gospel of Jesus Christ, the church. There are tons of Christians out there that are confused. Um, There's a group, WCC, ecumenical movement. We need to be united. All the churches, all the denominations, all the religions, you guys, we need to be united. That's the movement. WCC, ecumenical. And they put the peace. You know, God wants peace. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And you need to, we need to be united. Unity. This is really good value. And they put this value up front. And if, if you have another value like uniqueness, Jesus Christ. Of course, you know, this one is important. This one is, this one is important. But in, in order for us to put this up front, you could drop it. It's not about just only Jesus. We could accept other religions, folk religions, so that we could be united. Of course, I, I understand. Jesus you know, he's the Savior, he's a you know, Messiah or something like that, but we could drop it for a while for us to be united, bring unity, bring peace. It seems like they're religious. Seems like they're worshiping God. Not at all. That's the trends of this generation, postmodernism, relativism. She just wanted to expose what the Pharisees was doing, were doing at the time. And he called them brood of vipers. You need to know. If you look at the uh, standards of this world, it's not stable. Is it? It changes from time to time, right? Their values changes. But it's not stable. It's not fixed. According to circumstance, according to realities, they change their values, their standards. Little vipers. As a Christian, as a citizen of God's kingdom, you need to know the trends of this generation. Um, it is really dangerous. Uh, 
There's tons of uh, ways out there to really deal with your loneliness, depression. They're going to offer so many good stuff, and fancy stuff. It might work. TM, Transcendental Meditation. If you do it, then there's a 40 days uh, trials. Oh, okay. You could come to the meditation center for 40 days, right? What, 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 what is your purpose of coming to the uh, meditation center, TM center? Oh, I, I, I want to, like, you know, get rid of, uh, like, a reduced time for me to use smartphones. Really kind of practical and little, right? They come to the TM center for 40 days, and it works. They provide... Different Gospels. You don't need to really say that, oh, only Jesus, only Christ. Right? You don't need to do that. Be open-minded. Accept everything. There's a tons of ways to be happy. It is really dangerous. Vipers and then deceitful. And at the time... The vipers were common at the time. You could see ev everywhere. This generation is just like vipers. And it is really dangerous. Um, Satan comes to Eve, right? So friendly. You know, it seems like you know, he's carrying Eve. Oh, don't you want to be like, you know, smart enough to kind of discern what is good, what is evil? You just take it. So I want you to really think about inputs. Since it is really friendly, it comes to you so friendly, it seems like, you know, they are caring for you. All the commercials, all the messages that you receive, you know, you, you watch all the SNS. There's tons of tons of inputs. We don't, we don't even know that there are dangers and deceitful. Since it is common, we just take it without filter. Okay, that's good. Everyone is doing it. Everyone accepting it. Why not? I don't want to be narrow-minded, you know. That's why people don't like Christians. I want to be a Christian who has open-minded. Jesus wanted to expose what the Pharisees was doing, were doing at the time. And he said, the tree is known by its fruits. He's talking about this. This is fruit. Then you need to think about all the process. What's the input? And they were thinking about it for a long time. And then they say something. Our hearts. That's the matter. That's the source. Even before that, what came into your heart? That's more important. Even though Pharisees, they uh, kind of memorize all the Torah, almost Torah. Right? They memorize it. They recite it. They discuss about it. But they took it as tradition. They took it as what? Just religious ritual. They don't even know anything about God's intention, reason, and purpose of giving that laws and Torah. They just focused on the content. Of course, they are so good at applying the Torah principle to their practical applications. That's what we see. You know, Jewish people are so good at 
you know, educating their children. They get it from Torah. Jesus is saying that our hearts the matter. Whatever you are on the, on the inside is going to come out of your mouth. That's the major principle of this passage. What is inside of your heart, it's going to come out. That's the fruits. The heart is the basis of our thinking, our thoughts, our mind, our will, our source of knowledge. So this is the source. That's the matter. So you need to know how to take care of your heart, the condition and state of your heart. Today's passage reminds us that there are no neutral words. When you say something, uh, it's not neutral. It comes from input. You let it be seated in your heart for a while, and you meditate upon it, and then it came out. It comes out. So it is not neutral at all. Now, when you study history, it is important who is teaching that history. You know what I'm saying? They do have their own worldview and look at the history, what happened. They came up with their own interpretation. It is not neutral. When they say, when they teach, it came from this process. Matthew uh, chapter 15 and verse 18, it says, Those things which proceed out of the mouth came forth from the heart, and they defile a man. A heart is matter, and this is the source of everything, then how can we check the heart? Your tongue. Uh, if you look at Proverbs, uh, you can see how important it is to what kind of words that you're going to speak. And there's a lot of wisdom concerning your tongue. Um, when you kind of read First Samuel, you can see. Whatever Samuel said, it didn't fall down to the ground. It was, it was fulfilled. Every word that he speak, spoke were fulfilled. So, there's a kind of experiment, right? Uh, two bananas, <laughs> and one of them is you're going to curse at it, at, you know, you're going to speak all the bad words to banana, right? And this one, you're going to, you know, treat the banana really sweet. Thank you, love you, <laughs> and everything. You see the differences. If you use your tongue wisely, and you will uh, know how to maintain your heart. If it is not, then you're going to ruin your heart. St. Augustine, he tells us, quote, A person must first be changed in order for his work to be changed. So your heart reflects, like refers to who you are, the person. Instead of trying to change your words or actions, you got to change yourself first. Uh, <clears throat> if you know what Jesus Christ has done for us uh, concerning our salvation, He's going to uh, take care of your hearts. And we're going to have transformed heart. 
That's why we're going to speak transformed words. So this process is sanctification. So God is working in us. It's going to be input. I'm going to talk about that. But you need to work on this, not only, only this. You're going to get to know what kind of tree that you have. Why? It's fruits. Okay, it's fruits. But you need to take care of this part first to have a good fruits. So, learn God's language. Um, if you look at the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 23 to 24, it says, this is right after um, they uh, finished rebuilding the, t- uh, the wall of the city. And then uh, Nehemiah went back to Persia for a while, and he came back. It's not that long time. It says, in those days also I saw the Jews who had married women of Ashdod, Ammon, Moab. And half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod, and they could not speak the language of Judah, but only the language of each people. Um, You are speaking English, right? You know the culture of this nation, and you use uh, norms and everything. It's not just language. If you speak the language, then there's a culture behind that. That's why, for me, it's really hard for me to understand uh, and study the language, English. It's not just words. It's not just sentence, right? You've got to learn God's language. Um, Nehemiah brought kind of revolution, revivals, right? Reformation in the city of Jerusalem. People were so excited about rebuilding the wall of the city, Jerusalem, right? And they completed. And they celebrated. They offered sacrifice to God. And after a while, they totally forgot about what? God's covenant. And they got married with Ashdod, Ammon, Gentiles, pagans. And their children were not able to speak the language of Judah. They forgot about the language of God. They could not speak the language of Judah. That means they cannot even read the Torah, God's word. They cannot even communicate with God anymore. How can we learn God's language as an input? Hear God and His words. Hear God and learn how He speaks. That's His words. I don't want you to just focus on these words like a scripture, but you need to learn how he speaks because we want to get to know him, right? So not just the content of the Bible, but you need to learn how he speaks, how he fulfilled that. So hear him and his words. Let God and His language be your dominant inputs to your hearts and your spirit. Uh, We tend to hear the voice of the world a lot. We just let it come. That's our input. input. We open up YouTube, Facebook, and SNS. Tons of information comes to your brain and your heart. It's going to be seated in your heart. For a long time. You're going to think about it. 
you're going to ponder upon it. And then you're going to use that language. If you know how to use that language, you'll be acknowledged by the people around you. If you are talking about a totally different language, like a spiritual language, you'll be kicked out of the community. Don't just listen to or hear the voice of the world or the people in it. Um, it's going to affect you. how you think, how you perceive, and how you speak. Don't just hear God or learn how He speaks, but let it sit. Let it sit in your heart and make it yours. That's the meditation. I think this is really important to learn God's language. So if you have inputs, don't stop there. You need to really spend time to really think about it. Like I said, keep, keep asking His intention. His intention. Why did you speak? Right? Why do you speak with that content? And let it become your own language. And use it. If you keep on using it, you'll be strengthened. Uh, when I learn uh, English, people recommend me to Speak aloud or re read aloud so that you could hear that too. So if you want to kind of learn how to speak, how to pronounce a certain words, then you need to read aloud and speak aloud. That's how you learn language. Use it. Then your souls, your hearts will be strengthened. Not just hear the words of God, you need to really meditate upon, ponder upon that words of God and then use it. Speak aloud. That's the forum. When you organize it and then when you uh, use it, you'll be strengthened. That's my case a lot. When I share my forum, that's the time for me to organize God's word. That's for you. And people, will, people who hear your language will be saved and strengthened. For the people around you. So, <clears throat> we need to learn God's language. Input. Then you're going to see your outputs, your words will be changed and transformed. Um... Since this is our reality, you know, that we are facing, you know, they are so deceitful and uh, it's not stable, it's not consistent, uh, they are even confused, they don't even know what they're talking about, what they are presenting, uh, but you need to get to know that. Jesus will expose this uh, with the truth, then you need to take care of your heart in order for us to acknowledge that. Um, how? So we're going we're gonna to work on the fruits, right? Then this process, it's really important. Learn God's language. So hear God's word and let it sit in your heart. You meditate upon and ponder upon that and like make it yours, your own language. So you could use it so that you could be strengthened by that and then you're going to strengthen uh, people around you. Let's pray together. The tree is known by its fruits. What do you think? What kind of 
trees that you are. What kind of tree you are. What kind of fruits that you are bearing right now. Um, when you see people around you, you could see, you know, see that, oh, he's kind of negative. All the time he's talking about all the negative things. That's their inputs, and that's their meditation. Oh, even though he's not or she's not talkative, if I have some kind of conversation with that person, I get strengthened, I get challenged. That's their input and meditation. That's the state of their hearts, and that's their spiritual state. Um, I do have my prayer all the time. I pray for my spiritual strength, uh, spiritual sensitivity, and spiritual authority. Unfortunately, I became like, you know, talkative. <laughs> but my prayer is, I don't want to speak a lot, but whatever I say, whatever I share, Lord, would you make it strong and good so that people could be strengthened by it. Um, that's a spiritual authority. Let's really build up accountability one another as a community. Um, we often say that watch out your mouth. <laughs> uh, watch out you could, we could say that but not only that let them really work on this inputs and meditation since Jesus' disciples they are the ones who would carry out the calling and mission that Jesus Christ uh, gave them uh, Jesus wanted to really expose the reality of Pharisees and spiritual reality. So just like that, he wanted to really share that with us today. We are surrounded by this brood of vi vipers, this generation. Let's pray together.